How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy. And as you can see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons. And folks, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm recording this video right now past 3.30 a.m. Eastern on November 30th. If you're wondering why I am, it's because the grind never stops here on Wardy NYM. All these news, all these rumors, all off-season long, we are covering to a T. So don't hesitate to smash that like and subscribe button. It's the easiest and best way to support the channel. And thank you so much in advance as this video will, of course, be coming out later today. And hopefully, I get some shut-eye after recording this one. But we have a really key quote to get into from the latest Joel Sherman article highlighting the Mets' interest in not only Yoshinobu Yamamoto, but Shota Imanaga as well, and that there is great potential for the Mets to potentially land both MPB stars this MLB offseason. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's an insane thought. No, I'm not going to get my hopes up. But the fact that there is certainly a level of interest here and a heavy interest has me naturally excited as a fan that would love nothing more than to see this exactly come to fruition. But it starts from left to right. As you see, Steve Cohn's cash opens up both baseball worlds for David Stearns by Joel Sherman. And in this, you have the following, and I quote, That is why you can hear this from an executive who said his perception is the Mets are going full bore, meaning they're all in, they're working as fast as possible and trying to land Japanese stars Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Shota Imanaga, among others. And I quote, They're not messing around. I don't think that they have the stomach for a year or two to get the ship turned around. So, of course, I want to know your initial reactions down below to this quote and this article as a whole. So, Joel Sherman's purpose with this piece is to explain that, yes, this is David Stearns writing the Mets, and he doesn't necessarily have the familiarity with working well in the free agent market because he was working with a limited payroll there in Milwaukee but emphasize how different it is now with the endless resources having the richest owner in the game today in Steve Cohen and how we know David Stearns is not going to scoff at the notion of acquiring said players and is going to now reach a realm of possibility that he has never touched before as an exec in baseball and in doing so you cannot count the Mets out on literally anyone including Shohei Otani which is a separate discussion in itself in which they touched on the article links down below as always to check it out after watching this one but the fact here that you have execs around baseball probably guys that know uh, quite a bit on what's going on with the Mets not only with how they're operating but the interest level here in both Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Shota Imanaga it's one thing for the Mets to have heavy interest all in which they have been reportedly for a while and they coveted Japanese star who very well could be one of the highest paid players in baseball before he even throws a pitch is already being deemed as a potential Cy Young candidate when the guy hasn't even hit the bigs yet that being in Yoshinobu Yamamoto that we talked endlessly about this offseason but Shota Imanaga who the Mets have also scouted would be an amazing fit for the middle back end of this rotation the idea just the thought of a Japanese three-headed monster rotation consisting of Yoshinobu Yamamoto Shota Imanaga Kodai Senga I mean who isn't salivating at the mouth of the thought of that because I know I certainly am I mean that up for breakfast give me it right here right now please and thank you David Stearns and Steve Cohen yes this is a tall task and no I'm not going to sit here and say this is a guarantee to happen but this is a big deal this is a massive deal because it tells you that the Mets are more than willing to spend this offseason and they are far from done when addressing this rotation and of course it comes down to, it takes two to tango just because the Mets have heavy interest in both pitchers here does not mean that that is going to be reciprocated right you know Shota Imanaga we got to see how he's feeling because there has been much in the public eye about him to this point Yamamoto we know that he has a willingness to play with Japanese players like Kodai Senga who absolutely wants him and loves him and really wants him on this team and in this rotation has a willingness to play in a big market idolizes you know what the Yanks have done with their storied history the pinstripes all that stuff but is very open to the idea of playing in a big market is not limiting it to say specific club so that's certainly a plus here and I don't really think I need to talk much more on Yoshinobu Yamamoto you see the stat line down below the guy is literally one of the biggest faces in baseball today and he hasn't even pitched at the major league level yet a true phenom himself and an upper echelon of a class where you have Yamamoto then you have a gap then you have every other starting pitcher available in the Frazier market when you evaluate tiers he is at tier a he is exactly where he needs to be as one of the best young pitchers in all of baseball today we love the guy we want him in Queens I am going to be dying at the idea for him to come in Queens and so hopefully comes to fruition if he goes elsewhere I'm certainly going to be bummed about it but that's natural given the hype behind this guy and just how electric he has been with, of course, three consecutive Cy Young version awards there in Japan. Getting the triple crowns over there just has been nothing short of an absolute phenom at the MPB level, trying to take those talents now to Queens. But then we get into Shota Imanaga, and he's a really interesting one because he's a southpaw, which you love, isn't known for the overwhelming velo, but has some nasty off-speed pitches, as is the case with Yamamoto with the off-speed. Yamamoto is known for that nasty splitty as well, similar to Kodai Senga, and you have some nasty off-speed pitches here from Shota Imanaga as well. Now, Shota, at the age of 30, 
30. You see a stat line down below here as well. I would like to emphasize that it is slightly off from the last time that I did this graphic. He started two more games to conclude his MPB season, so 22 instead of 20, as year rate is around 2.8, not 2.7 that you see here. So my apologies for the little hiccup there. Point is, Shota at the age of 30 has been a very consistent starter at the MPB level over the past number of years over there in Japan. And him, along with Kodai Senga, along with Yoshinobu Yamamoto, could be one of the most entertaining rotations that we've seen all of baseball next season if that dream scenario does happen. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not getting my hopes up. The Mets land one of them. I will be more than ecstatic about it. Shota Imanaga is projected to get a Kodai Senga S type contract. Senga, of course, received that multi year deal last offseason with the Mets. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, initially, the belief was okay, around 150 million, maybe touching 200 to the point where we're looking north of 300 million because everyone and their mother wants this guy. His market is still absolutely massive. He's taking his time, and this will not be an easy task to land him, regardless of the Mets having more money than any other club in baseball. Because you're not just spending that money, you're spending additional millions for his posting fee, so he easily could be getting north of $300 million. It's a lot. But going back to Shota Imanaga here for a second, what I am so appealed by him is not only the fact that he's a southpaw, but also his consistency. He's known for getting a lot of plenty ground ball outs, fly ball outs as well during his time there in Japan. And when you look at his element, the type of pitcher he is, Yamamoto, the type of pitcher that he is, Kodai Senga, they have similarities, but they also have differences. It's not like you're going to see three guys in the rotation that are all similar just because they're all the same countrymen, right? That is not the case whatsoever. They have different pitch mixes. They have different arsenals. While there are similarities between Yamamoto and Senga, in particular when looking at the life on the fastball and the splitty, uh, but you see here with Imanaga, it changes things up a little bit. And they have a strong southpaw in the middle of this rotation, regardless of if it's Imanaga, if it's a Jordan Montgomery, or even Eduardo Rodriguez, who the Mets also have interest in, that will be discussing the near future aside from what we discussed in previous live shows over the past 24 hours. I would be very happy with any of those options, but personally, obviously, I don't want to settle with just one of those guys. Of course, the big fish is Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and that is what we were hoping for first and foremost than anything else. But again, the thought of the Mets having a three-headed monster of all these Japanese guys, and Kodai Senga, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Shota Imanaga, Tell me right now in the comments below, how do you not want that? Yes, I understand the concerns. You would be acquiring two guys, giving a boatload of guaranteed money when neither of them have pitched at the MLB level. But I think Kodai Singh is a great example of what could be had here. And for teams, you know, for players rather, in Imanaga's case in Yamamoto, trying to see what could be the best fit. Seeing Singh's great success, a Cy Young caliber player in his rookie year, is telling you all you need to know. Guys of their caliber can have success, not only at the MLB level, but especially in a big market like they're in Flushing, Queens. That would be massive in itself. But... Let's look at the potential downside here. You know, just God forbid, just playing devil's advocate. The big issue with these guys is one, the guaranteed money. When you don't exactly know what you're getting at the MLB level, there's that risk involved. But two, this is also a team where you would need, at minimum, a six-man rotation. If you bring in Yoshinobu Yamamoto, you likely need a six-man rotation. Kodai Singa has worked so well that you can expect him every fifth day. He doesn't need that extra rest as much, barring any changes, because, of course, his elbow is a little shaky. There's a reason why there's a clause in his contract where, you know, there could be a potential opt-out if he, say, misses time because of Tommy John surgery. But pushing that aside, you just need to look at the fact, when looking at Yamamoto and Imanaga, they may need that extra day. These are guys that are accustomed to pitching at right around once a week in the MPB, and that isn't the case here at the MLB level. So the only true risk I see here is one, not knowing for certain where you're getting at the MLB level, and two, a Mets team in desperate need for reliability in the rotation. That is still a little bit of a question mark. So when you look at those question marks, you can push them aside because, in my opinion, the potential far outweighs the risk here. Yes, it's a lot of guaranteed money, but the beauty of it is that even if this hypothetical situation were to happen with both of them, Steve Cohen has continued to show a willingness to eat money if things do not go in the Mets' direction. So when looking at a long-term vision, I'm not overly concerned. And speaking long-term, which is, of course, the Mets' vision beyond 2024, Yamamoto fits the bill at the young age of 25. That's why he's an anomaly. That's why he's going to get north 250 to 300 million dollars as a guy who's yet to step foot on an MLB field and for Shota Imanaga he's going to be projecting more in that Kodai Singa S range that middle echelon range and that isn't bad whatsoever but 
again, these guys, the thought process, I'm in absolute love with it. And I really, really am hoping and praying that it happens that the Mets at minimum land one of them. Rest assured, they have a lot of moves that they will be making and they will be making them fast. So stay tuned, Mets fans. Make sure you're chiming in, staying tuned on the channel as we are going to be covering everything to an absolute T. Even if I'm, say, not home, when breaking news happens, we're going live or I'm doing a video on my phone right away. We have to be consistent. We're covering it all, not only because I love what I do and because it's uh, something that I built as being credible here on YouTube, YouTube with my consistency, but also I'm a diehard fan. I just love sharing my opinions and thought process on anything regarding the club, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. I just love every aspect of it. So Mets fans, let me know your thoughts down below. How do you feel about this interesting quote from an exec here stating that, yeah, the Mets are all in on Yamamoto and Shota Imanaga. No one should be kind them out right now, farther seen from it, and they are working slightly in silence. Could that be a good thing going forward? We have yet to see. Thank you again, folks. Stay tuned for consistent content as always, and let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.